So, how long did you keep the, that Antoria guitar? Uh, not as long as I promised my dad. Uh, I had a economic crisis, I think. I can remember having to sell that to buy a car. And I bought a 1966 Hillman Super Snipe. Actually, it was Hillsman Super Minx, but no one gives a damn about it, because this is about music and not about cars, right? Jeez. I don't have any pictures of it, but you can look it up online if you want to know what that looked like. Uh, I looked very sexy when I was driving it. It was a heap of rust, but it was great. I really liked it. Yeah, so I had to sell the Antoria. It was the only thing I had of any value, and I needed the money. And Musicians always struggling. You yeah. buy it, you sell it, you buy another one. Yeah. So about this this white looking strange white guitar. <laughs> oh well, yeah. Then of course I was still playing, so I needed something. And uh at that time I lived in a, a small town uh south of London, the name of Chertsey. Very old town. And opposite where I lived, well, was a small shop on its own beside the river, and it was called Wem Music. Uh, this is uh, was the workshop of a famous guy, Charlie Watkins was his name. And Wem was a you used to see these big Wem PA's all over the place in the late sixties, seventies. And uh, it stood for Watkins Electronic Music. So that was how the name Wem came. And, and the, the, you still see some of his amps and uh, guitar amps. He used to build guitar amps. I had one for a while. 15 watt little box about that big. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, he used to overdrive like shit. So it was great. Yeah. And... Uh, just a master volume and a master tone, and that was all you got. But he had in the in the front of the shop was uh, always laid out some amps and speakers, and a few guitar parts. Hmm. So I bought the body from him. The body and the neck came from him, and uh, Ray uh, Ray Bradbury's brother Keith, who was the bass player in the Sea Air Band. He worked at London Airport in the maintenance department of the British Airways. Mm. And uh, I primed the body and he took it to work and a guy there who was a spray painter for the aircraft sprayed it white with aircraft paint. Nice. So that was that was nice. Um, I got some Antoria pickups from a place called ABC Music, humbucking pickups. And we just sort of put it together. And I played it for a long time. Played it in a little blues band um, whose name I can't remember. But it was, was all right. It was a nice little blues band, five piece. And then um, I kept that guitar a long time. I played it, uh, yeah, played it for a while. I played it right through till... Probably about 1990. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it had a great action. It was really easy to play. The humbuckers were really quite powerful. The overdriven sound was easy to achieve. It yeah. nice. <laughs> and it looked very white, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And who, who were you playing with at that time? Uh, I was playing with that. Small blues band, and I was playing with a guy called Dave Sumner, a harmonica player in a duo. Uh, we'd been to a a place called Frog, I think we could call Frog Studios, a place in Leatherhead, and we'd recorded a, a three or four track cassette. Um, he was a he was a great guy, a really unassuming guy. You see him in the street, you'd never think he was a a blues harmonica player, but he could play really nice. And uh, he's featured also in my All Stars band, as you'll see later. 
Um, we had this little duo. We used to go to folk clubs and play. There was one in a place called Stoke D'Abernon, which is a really old name. It's near Cobham in Surrey. We used to play there. We used to play at the White Hart in Ripley, a once a month gig there. Uh, and it, we'd play uh, Dustin Bennett songs. Mm. Uh, I met Dustin Bennett once. Uh, he invited me back to his club. It was gone to see a band in Richmond. Um, a little known band called the Rolling Stones. Um, so, uh, and he invited me back to his place afterwards. We got, we were quite drunk already. And, uh, a bit later on, another guy came in who I didn't know. And, uh, I had to go catch the last train, which I think I missed. And uh, anyway, the guy that was there was a little-known guitar player called Peter Green, who shared a flat with Dustin Bennett in, in Richmond. So I met him, and I never knew who he was at the time. Yeah. That's typical of my musical career, meeting people who could have swung my career one way or the other, but, yeah. but never really did. So... Yeah, I played in this duo with Dave Sumner. When we played these um, these folk clubs, we'd always we have a different name every time we played there. Why? Well, just because it was fun to yeah. do. One week we'd be called A Bunch of Cherries, and the next week we'd be called Picasso's Old Etchings. We just would choose a name on the night, whatever we fancied, and it, it became a thing of, of people just turning up to what just to see what our name was that month. I can remember one night in Ripley, uh, I'd been working a little bit in a studio in Weybridge where I lived at the time. Um, in uh, I can't remember the name of the studio, but it was owned by Judy Zook, she was a singer in the 70s. Stay with me till dawn was her big hit. Um, and her boyfriend is the guy she lived with was called Paul and he, he built the studio in their house and I used to do a little bit of sessions for him and uh, we were going to play that I was there one afternoon having a cup of tea and she said what are you doing and I said well I'm I'm going to go play with my friend Dave Sumner in, in Ripley tonight and she said oh let, to Paul let's should we go so he says, yeah, we'll ring around, get a few people, and we, we'll go. So we got, I didn't expect to see her there, really, but she, they did turn up, about five of them. And uh, another girl whose name I never knew, was a, she was a singer as well. So after the first number, we invited the two girls to come on and, and do backing vocals with us, nice. which they did. Um, and it, it was it was really, you know, very folk, clubby, jam type of situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was a good night. One of our best nights, one of our famous nights. What were you called that night? Do you remember? <laughs> no, can't remember. <laughs> I don't know. Two dogs pitting, I expect, or something. I don't know what we were called. <laughs> but it was a, it was a fun night. Yeah, that was the White Heart at Ripley. Uh, 